Harvest Church family. Good morning, Brad. And Pastor Brad, we had an awesome, if you missed Sunday school and you're new, you missed a great time. We talked about putting God first, not just in time, like when you wake up in the morning, yes, it's important to start your day, but in every situation that he is first, you go to him first. It's so important. Let's go to him right now first as we pray. Yes. God, I just thank you for this opportunity to go to you first in our days to just start out with you and throughout the day to just come to you. What do you say about it? What does your word say about it? We worship you. We praise you, God. Let us listen to you today in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hey, uh, ties and offerings, there's a box on the back wall, a uh, wooden box, you can put ties and offerings in there, or through your banking institution. Financial institution is another way of giving to the church and the ministry here. And thank you for all that support the church. Sunday school for all ages on Sunday morning at 9.30. Uh, that's going on. No pickleball, no pickleball Monday night. We're gonna take a night off. Uh, enjoy your family time together. No pickleball, we'll get back at it the following week on the 10th. Also, no food pantry tomorrow, uh, but we are having food pantry church cookout on the 10th also of July, uh, between from 11 to one o'clock. It should be two o'clock, close enough, we'll figure it out. Uh, great time to come and minister to those in our community, uh, sit down and talk about Jesus with them. Great time to be doing that together. Next slide. Oh, also there's a, um, a I thought we had a slide about the fruit. Uh, Brad, I see Brad about the fruit. Fruit. Have you started that yet, Brad? Yes. It's it, gone on to its. It's about ready to go to its third house. Third house. Okay. So you can buy fruit inspector insurance. Check with Brad on that. He can give you more information information about that uh, as well. There. Back up. There it is. There it is. Uh, the fruit. We talked about that a little bit last week. But uh, see Brad. He's got that going on. Uh, a little fundraiser for the kids having fun doing that and showing love to one another along the way. Let's do our verse together. Don't, Don't be misled. If you do not mock the justice of God, you will always harvest what you plant. Those who live only to satisfy their own sinful nature will harvest decay and death from that sinful nature. But those who live in the Holy Spirit
desperately need you, Father. So, Father, we pray for that. Father, be with our missionaries as they share the good news of the gospel around the world. Be with our men and women as they serve, as Wraith has uh, gone to boot camp. Uh, protect him, watch over him. Be with all our military men and women that serve, especially this time of the year, during this time, Father, as we celebrate America. Father, I pray for those in our church family uh, going through Procedures. Nancy has a procedure this week. Dwayne has a procedure. Lance is homesick. Father, be with him. Uh, Father, be with Mark's mom as she faces a surgery this week. Guide the doctor's hands. And Father, I pray for the family I just found out about this morning who lost a child to a drug overdose. Father, you know all about the situation. We pray for that family. <laughs> Father, we pray for Bill and Heather Whitney and the loss of their child as they put him 
to rest this week. Father, we pray that you would comfort them and walk with them. Be of little Luke as he fights for every breath, every day, every time. So, Father, we pray for that. Father, we all come with needs and things of our own life that we struggle with. But Father, today is one of those days that we can just rest in you and lay it at your feet. And know that you are more than able. Our desire is to love you. And we know that you love us. So, Father, help us to experience and feel and know that we are loved by the Father. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You may be seated. The children will be dismissed for junior church. A disciple of Jesus is a learner learning to Walk like Jesus, live like Jesus, be like Jesus to others. Exactly. That's what we're called to do and to be, and uh, that's what I'm striving for, and I hope you are too. Uh, I read a, a devotion on this uh, probably a couple months ago, I guess it was, by a guy named Craig Groeschel. It's called The Power of Change, and he talked about uh, we reap uh, what we sow. I thought, well, that's biblical, right? Yeah. And so I dug more into the article, and I thought, you know what, there's a sermon in here someplace. And so some of this is from him, and some of it is right out of the Word of God, and some of it is just inspired because God's a great God, and he loves us, and he gives me some wisdom beyond what I am. And uh, so that's the, the setup for today's sermon. So if you have your Bible, turn with me to Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 through 9 is, is where we're going to be at. And we all know that our habits that we have in our life affect our life. The habits that we have affect our life, and our habits shape our life, the habits and things that we do. But God really doesn't say habits in the Bible. He uses a different word. He uses the word of, the metaphor of seeds, actually. Uh, in Jesus' time, as Jesus was on the earth, and we know as the Bible is written, there was a lot of agricultural, there was a lot of farming, a lot of that type of thing. There wasn't a fast food place, there wasn't a manufacturing place, but everyone knew what seeds were, and everyone understood that the law of the harvest was you reap what you sow. Everyone got that. Their whole economic base was based around that, and a lot of people were farmers or fishermen or that type of thing, but back in then, they understood the concept of planting seeds. And I think we understand the concepts of planting seeds as well. So turn with me to Galatians chapter uh, 6, verses 7 through 8. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh, there's one option, uh, from the flesh you will reap a destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit, there's the other option, from the Spirit you reap, reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, you will reap a harvest if you don't give up. You reap what you sow. For us non-farmers, let's do a little word definition so everybody's on the same page. The word sow means to plant. Sowing a seed means to plant a seed. You put it in the ground. To reap is what you gather, what you get out of the ground. It is what grows out of the ground. Not all things grow upright. For example, potatoes grow in the ground. Sweet potato. Um, they grow in the ground. Okay? So reaping and sowing. Everybody understands the definition thereof. I think it's in the bulletin as well. So let's start to break down the passage. Do not be deceived. Don't be misled is what Paul's saying. Uh, don't, don't miss this ideal. Don't be led astray. Don't be foolish. Uh, don't be stupid would be another way of saying that. Uh, you reap what you sow. Don't miss that. Don't be misled by any of that. He continues saying, God will not be mocked. The Greek translation of mock means to thumb your nose at someone. Make fun of them, so to speak. You might be able to fool some, fool some people some of the time, but you're not going to fool God any of the time. You can't ignore and get away with what you're doing. You can't get away with it. You might think you're getting away with it, but God sees it. 
Just because he doesn't strike you dead the minute you do something really stupid doesn't mean he doesn't see it. He sees it. He still records it. He still understands it. So don't be deceived. God can't be mocked. Don't fool. You know, a lot of people can try to fool their family or neighbors or friends and things like that. You don't fool God. Not at all. And your bad behavior, you can't just excuse it. You just can't say, oh, that's the way I'm made, or uh, the devil made me do it, so to speak. You can't justify it, and you can't blame your bad behavior on someone else. Don't do that as well. We will be judged according to our character and according to what we do by the seeds that we plant. The next words, a man reaps what is sowed. So, uh, that's what we need to understand. We need to be wise about that. Don't misunderstand, don't be misled. When you put seeds in the ground, you get crops out of the ground. Okay? Everybody understands the concept? Next slide, please. This is a harvest of Randy and Jill. A little bit of onions, cucumbers. You said those are turnips? Is that right? Turnips. Those are red skin potatoes, not beets. Someone's trying to tell me they're beets. They're red skin potatoes and little green beans. Can anybody tell me what Randy and Jill planted in their garden? They planted seeds. And what did they harvest? Do you think Randy and Jill went out and said, hey, you know what? I want some apples. So I planted all those seeds, but they're standing around waiting for apples to grow. That'd be foolish, wouldn't it? They planted those seeds and got that harvest. Thank you for proving the point. You plant, you receive. You sow, you reap. You harvest what you plant. You get out what you put in. The outcome is determined by what you put into it. The results of our life, what we put into it, the decisions that we make, the habits that we have will be the habits that come out of what we put in. Paul uses a spiritual example of sowing of the flesh and sowing of the spirit. We have examples of both of them. The flesh is our sinful nature. The seeds of the flesh. When we sow or plant seeds of the flesh, those things that are wrong, ungodly, sinful, uh, self-seeking, those things, the results, we reap a harvest of destruction, pain, suffering, Every action, there's a reaction when it comes to planting and sowing and reaping and harvesting. I love the way the Message Bible says it. <laughs> Listen to the Message Bible of Galatians 6. Don't be misled. No one, no one makes a fool of God. What a person plants, he will harvest. Listen to this. The person who plants selfishness, selfishness, ignores the needs of others, ignores God, Harvest a weed, uh, harvest a crop of weeds. When we plant selfishness, we end up with destruction. And the writer of the Message Bible uses an example of weeds. I don't know about you, but my grandpa always had a garden. And no matter what you did, the weeds always grew. Always grew. And it seems like it's the way in our life as well. We don't even think about it. It just happens. Those weeds, that selfishness pops up. Uh, we don't have to even plant those weeds. It just kind of happens. It happens when we don't weed the garden, pull the weeds out. He goes on to say, all that we have to show for our life are weeds. But if we plant in response to God, letting God's Spirit do the growth work in us, harvesting a crop of real life, eternal life. Eternal, eternal life is the seeds that we have got to plant. You, you can always expect what you put in the ground is what you get out. And if you plant a sinful life, you won't go to heaven. It's that simple. If you plant the things of God, you will go to heaven. 
bad decisions lead to bad consequences, death and destruction, pain and suffering, disappointments and misery, and the list goes on. A disciple of Jesus sows or plants seeds of the Spirit, meaning they allow themselves to be empowered by the Holy Spirit in their life. And they do things that are honoring to God. And we plant things that are pleasing to God. We reap a harvest of joy, peace, love, everlasting life. Those are the seeds that we want to be planting. The results, we reap what we harvest. And that harvest is eternal life. A disciple of Jesus is someone who is not out just for themselves, but out to look for what God has in store for them. If you live your life just for yourself, and ignore God, forget all the things that God has taught you, disregard the Bible, live apart from the Bible, live for yourself, do all those things, you will end up with death and destruction, pain and suffering, misery, disappointment, all those things, and a life away from God, and you end up in a place called hell. That's what the Word of God means. It's pretty sure, straightforward, tells it the way it is. Whatever we plant, we harvest. But it's true also spiritually as well. This is the way to live our lives. We reap what we sow. What we sow. Uh, it's a law that's at work. It's not a law like don't do this, don't do that. It is a law, like the law of gravity. Everybody understands the law of gravity, right? If you jump up, you will come down. You don't trip up, you trip down. But we say trip up, but you trip down. It's a law of gravity. We use the law of gravity. When I built my house, we expected the law of gravity to work to hold my house on top of my foundation. We use the law of gravity when you drive your car. When you drove here today, you expected the law of gravity to be working to hold your car down. Yesterday I sat and ate food. I expected the law of gravity to hold my food on my plate until my fork got it, right? See, we, we use the law of gravity. We accept the law of gravity. We can't get away from it unless we went to the moon or something but it is a law you can't get around it it's the same thing with the law of you reap what you sow it is a law i don't care if you like it i don't care if you agree with it whether you pick sides i like this side of it i like that side of it the law is here to stay just like the law of reaping and sowing is here to stay so what do we do about it we accept it we learn how to live with it we figure out what makes the most of it uh, what are we planning along the way? The law of gravity. So when it comes to the law of sowing and reaping, think about it. You are the farmer of your life. Think about it. You are the farmer. You get to plant the seeds of your life. You, you. Randy, how did you decide what seeds to plant in the garden? By what you like to eat, right? How come you didn't plant... Uh, Rutabakers, or I don't care, pick something, or spinach. How can we do plant spinach? <laughs> uh, we, we plant what we want, right? We are the farmers of our life. We get to pick out what seeds we want to what grows in our lives because we reap what we sow. If you wanted corn, thanks Kevin for having corn. If you wanted corn in your garden, you'd plant corn seeds, right? If you wanted corn, you would plant that. If you wanted sweet potatoes, you would plant sweet potatoes. If you wanted beans, I even grabbed a thing of beans. Thanks, Alana, for the fruit pantry. Uh, planted beans, right? You, you, whatever you want, you plant. And then you harvest that, you get that. It would be foolish for me to plant uh, tomatoes and go out to my garden and think I would get corn. You say, Pastor Brian, that's stupid. Why would you do that? If you planted tomatoes, you should expect to get tomatoes. But don't we do that in our own lives at times? Don't we do that? Every single time, whatever you plant is what you get out. It happens every time. It happens in agriculture and farming. It happens in our life as well. Whatever you plant. <laughs> The outcome is what you plant. Let me give you some examples. If I lust after my neighbor's wife, and when I go to the gym, I lust after the girl in the, uh, the other workout suit, 
and I go on the internet and I watch some other stuff and I lust after that stuff, those are seeds I'm planting. And I get home, my marriage is a mess, and I can't figure out why God's punishing me for a messed up marriage. Let's see, I'm planting these seeds and I'm expecting a different outcome. See, we said it was foolish to plant tomatoes and expect corn. But see, we do that in our lives, don't we? Isn't that how it plays out in our lives? Why would I do that? It's what I planted. I planted those things. Here's another example of a college student. Graduates from college, uh, gets a great job, shows up late for work, doesn't really put in the full effort, leaves a few minutes early, and then there's a, a promotion available. And she's like, I'm on it. I'm, I got it. I, I, I'm the college student. I can. And she gets passed over. And then she blames God. God, how come you didn't? I was more qualified. The seeds that she was planting was showing up late and not giving 100% and leaving early and taking an extra lunch, long lunch hour. And then she wonders why she doesn't get the promotion. You see the seeds that she's planting in her life and the outcome? Yeah. Why? Why would that happen? You know, my boss isn't fair. No, it's what you've been planning. Here's another example. A guy sits around and, you know, eats mashed potatoes and baked beans and dressing and lots of breads and flies the couch often and doesn't exercise and comes the weekend, he has a few since it's Friday and then he has a few more on Wednesday or on Saturday and then just because the middle of the week have a couple and then Sunday it's the last day of the week so you have a couple more and then he turns 35 and he realizes he's 35 pounds overweight. How did that happen? And then when he turns 50 he's got cirrhosis of his liver and his kidneys are shutting down and he's like, God, what, why are you punishing me? What has he been sowing all this time? Extra bag of chips, extra humping of potatoes, extra, extra, not exercising. And we want to blame God. Like, God, it's your fault. Look at what you've done. It's, no, it's what you've been sowing. And now you are reaping those very things. Or, or it's like the girl. Uh, the woman, she's critical, she's negative, she's always nagging, da 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 da. And she wonders why she has no friends. So you say, What are you sowing? Criticism, nagging. And she wonders, God, how come I don't have any good friends? How come? How come? Wait, that's what she's been planning all this time in her life. So often we mess up our marriages, our relationships, our families, our careers, and we want to blame God. Like, God, it's your fault. No, God didn't do it. It's what you've been sowing because you reap what you sow. If you plant good habits, you'll get a great outcome. If you plant bad habits, don't expect a good outcome, right? You reap what you sow, we know that. If you don't like what you're reaping, Change what you're sowing. If you don't like what you're getting, change what you're sowing. If you don't like the harvest, change the seed. Change the seed. There, there's a great excite, assignment for you this afternoon. Since it's raining, thinking about planting and grass growing and everything else, take an honest look at yourself. What are those things that you're getting in your life? Are they from the seeds that you've been planting? Those habits you've been doing? If you've been doing bad habits, don't ex expect good outcome. Don't do that. Understand what's going on. Search your heart. Ask God to help you. Uh, figure it out. There's a point when it comes to habits and things like that. Sometimes, you know, it's always easier to blame someone else. You know, uh, it's their fault. They, you know, I'm, I'm the way I am because of someone else. Uh, uh, I'm the victim. Uh, Take responsibility for what you're doing. There's things that you can do to get a better outcome. There's things that we all can do for a better outcome. Don't deceive yourself. Understand, 
If you don't like what you're reaping, change what you're sowing because we reap what we sow. Romans 8, 1 and 2 says it like this. So there's no condemnation who belong in Christ Jesus. And because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. So the Holy Spirit has freed us from those bad seeds to having good seeds. He has freed us through the power of God. He has freed us so we can have new habits, new growth, new seeds that leads to God. Like sowing seeds, like reading the Bible. There's a great seed to have. Uh, the seed of reading the Bible, taking in the Word of God, the promises of God, the miracles of God, uh, learning about God, harvesting those thoughts of God in our lives, or the seed of worship, having the, the worship as you drive to work in the morning or in the shower or how, wherever and however you do it, uh, having that song in your heart. We talked about that a week or so ago, uh, that we have those seeds in our life that are good seeds, things of the Spirit, sowing the seed of thinking about how can I serve somebody today? God, I know you're going to bring somebody in my path, somebody that's going to come across my path that you want me to serve. Maybe it's just to open the door for them and a smile. Maybe it's a handshake. Maybe it's a hug. Maybe it's fix their flat tire. Maybe it's give them two bucks, whatever it is. God, I don't know what you have in store for them, but God, I want my eyes open. I want to sow a seed of generosity because when I do that, I, I realize how grateful I am. How incredible that God has blessed me so I can help someone else. Sowing seeds like that. It, it goes to parenting as well. You know, uh, we take our kids to Sunday school so they learn about Jesus, right? Uh, so they understand the things of God. So they see us worship. The, they understand why we come to church so we can worship and gather together because it's important to do that. And as we do it with our little children, as they grow up, the Bible says when they're old, they shall not depart from the things of God. Are you sowing those seeds into your children. Sunday school classes and junior church and all the other activities and kids club and youth group and great things. What kind of seeds are you sowing in your life? What kind of seeds are you planting? The ones that lead to eternal life or the ones that lead to death? Paul's really clear, strong. He says, don't be misled. Don't be deceived. You can't plant bad seeds and expect good outcome. You can't plant tomatoes and expect, expect corn. You plant, you harvest the very thing that you plant. You harvest exactly what you plant. If you don't like what you've been harvesting, let's change the seed. Let's plant the seeds of the things of God so we can have love and joy, peace, forgiveness, faith. I, the, the list just goes on. So we can have eternal life. Whatever you plant is what you harvest in your life. Let's bow our heads. Just do a quick examination of your life. What kind of seeds are you planting? Ones that lead to destruction, selfishness, weeds, or seeds that lead to eternal life through the Spirit of God? we pray that you would help us that your spirit would help us plant seeds that are God and those bad habits, those bad seeds that we've been doing for weeks months, years, generations we get rid of them and we plant godly seeds because we want to get the outcome. We want eternal life. That is our prayer today, Father. Help us plant seeds that are pleasing to you in every area of our life. 
In Jesus' name. Amen. Here's the invitation for communion this morning. If you truly and earnestly repent of your sins, who live in a life of love and peace with your neighbor, who intend to lead a new life in Christ, planting good seeds, I'd add in there, and walk in his holy ways, draw near with faith, take this holy sacrament to your comfort, humbly kneeling, making your honest confession before Almighty God. Almighty God, Father, Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we confess that we have sinned. We are deeply grieved as we remember the wickedness of our past lives. We have sinned against you, your holiness, your love, and deserve only your indignation and your anger. We sincerely repent and genuinely sorry for the wrongdoings and ever failing to do the things that we should, not planting the seeds that we should. Our hearts are grieved as we acknowledge that we are hopeless without your grace. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us, most merciful Father, for your sake, your Son, Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us, cleanse us, give us strength to serve and please you in newness of life, and honor you with your holy name. Amen. Amen. We do not come to this table on our own with self-confidence or pride, trusting in our own righteousness, but trusting only in your great mercy. We are not worthy to gather the crumbs under the table. Forgive us. Help us to live in obedience to your Son. On the night of his betrayal, Jesus took the bread and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples. And he said, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you and for many. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given things, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you drink in remembrance of me. You don't have to be a member of the Free Methodist Church to have communion, but you do have to be a member of God's family. And uh, if you would, j just take a cup and hold it. And we'll take communion together. We have it upstairs. Okay.
perfect sacrifice. Jesus took the bread, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples. He said, take and eat this in my body, which is bruised and broken for many. Do this in remembrance of me. In like manner, he took the cup. And when he gave him thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, you are a loving, awesome God who gave his one and only son for us. Jesus, the perfect Lamb of God, the perfect sacrifice, only one that was worthy to die for us. Father, I pray that we would plant good seeds, seeds of the Spirit this week and the days ahead, that we would see a harvest, a godly harvest. Father, help us to get rid of the bad seed, the weeds in our lives. Let your Holy Spirit convict us, point them out, pull them out, do what needs to be done so we can draw close to you. In the name of Jesus, amen. There should be baskets in the back. If you would put your cup in the back, that would be helpful. Go and serve the Lord. Have a great weekend, and God bless America.